How are you doing today? Alright, how are you? I'm wide awake. Are you? Yes. Are you sure? Because it's Friday at Comic Con. You <laughs> might be sleeping. I was earlier. <laughs> Uh, what's that like? Uh, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that verb. <laughs> I think none of us experience that often. Yep. Pretty much. Not this week. Not this week. Uh -uh. Yes. <laughs> so, anyone want to go first? Questions? So, the villains are the stars of this game. The villains are the stars of this game. Yeah. Which is quite refreshing for some people because it's actually running around every comic book. Yep. And for us, having made three Lego Batman games, uh, <laughs> it's about time the villains had their time to shine. Um, I think everyone, everyone ever that's played a Lego game has always wanted to play villains. And when we talk to the kids, that's all they want to do. They want to play Voldemort, they want to play Vader, they want to play the bad guys. So the DC roster of villains is awesome. So, that is a leap, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a child who is like the sweetest human, just like mommy. I love like the nicest person, and all of you want to swap for mine. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, but I'll take. We can shout a name with her. She seems super cool. Um, but he's like all well, it, all villain stuff, <laughs> and he's a really good dude. And I think that's part of it. Yeah. That even if you're a good-hearted person, it's so fun it's to play in the dark. I always say like, you know, I'm a pretty light person, and I love playing villains. Everyone Exactly. Yes. Yes, I am. I am one of the ultimate villains. I enjoy that. What's what's different or new and exciting about Silver Age? That's a question for Arthur. I think. Yeah, I I think this is the first time we've had Silver Banshee in one of our DC games. In the game. I'm, I'm almost yeah. positive because because obviously because we've been so hero focused previously, yeah. it is it's all been about the Justice League and, and then. Yeah, yeah, the Green Lantern Corps and everyone. It's always been about the good guys. This time around, it's like, okay, we'll just put them to one side and then we go really, really deep on, on all the villains. Um, and you get, you know, great characters like Silver Banshee and then some really weird ones like Toy Man and Ventriloquist and um, yeah, Hot King. Yeah, they're just really bizarre ones, but um, Silver Banshee's a cool character. Yeah, she's super cool. I mean, in terms of a difference between how she shows up in this game and how she shows up in Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, which is where I, I last uh, had the pleasure of voicing our fair maiden. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't know that I would even think about a difference. It's just a different universe, right? And this is, uh, you know, certainly going to be its own adventure. And there's a lot of, I mean, there's so much humor in this game. Yeah, I was going to say that's, I that, cracked that, up. That, that, that's, that's the difference. Is the yeah. tone of what what we we kind of write. Yeah. Is, you know, people people love Lego games because they're funny. But when we when we had this kind of blank piece of paper with this game and we first started discussing it, the, the two words we wrote were villains and funniest because we wanted to make it the funniest Lego game we've done. And you can do that because villains are terrible at everything they do because they actually there's a point in the story they have to be heroic because they're, they're up against the the justice syndicate, uh, you know, the, the, the crime syndicate. But the crime syndicate are pretending to be the Justice League. And and no one believes the villains, and and they're just like, what's going on, you know? And they're, so they're doing everything they can to try and expose them, but they're so bad at working together, and they're so bad at doing good things. It just kind of becomes this like, cacophony of like humor. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Um, but that's down to our writers, I think. But yeah, like you say, when we when we did a lot of the voice recording, it, it just devolves into like, I've got to say what, and, and you know. And, and, it's like, what, what, what context is in this line? And then, you know, there's just like, you have to try and explain the jokes. And, and it's good, it's fun. That's also part and parcel for us as voice actors doing games. And I get asked all the time, like, what's the biggest difference between voicing animation or films and games? And I'm like, okay, so you have beginning, middle, and end, or you got nothing. So, like, the games, you know, I'm completely reliant upon Arthur and his team and the voice director to give me context. And it has to be just enough so I 
can say the lines as quickly as possible so they can get to the next line. So it can't be like, let's sit down and talk about the backstory for this line. It's like, all right, so you're running and you're panicked. Go. Okay. <laughs> like, just do it. Um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely, there were a couple of times in the recording process that I stopped and cracked up and I was like, I'm sorry, I need a second. I would not be at liberty. I am still under NDA, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to make me break them. I live in terror of NDAs. Okay, what about the ones that were eliminated that they did? The one where she says, wee! No, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just making it up. Arthur, do you have a uh, favorite character in the game? I, this, mm, silver Bench. <laughs> not to put you on the spot. <laughs> It's it's really weird because um, like so, so I'm I'm involved like from day one and on designing everything, but when we go through each character and we break each character down, what makes this character great? You go through the comics and and, and, and you get their personality. It then goes to the animators and they always add things we don't kind of ask for. So. I, go, I come back to ventriloquist. Okay. Completely bottom tier. No disrespect to the ventriloquist. Such a, a low tier villain. But he has this move where you, you hold a circle, which is a, a special, and the ventriloquist dummy gets a piano out, starts playing a tune, and then the ventriloquist is down on the floor, crawling around. And it's like everyone starts dancing. It's like, where did that even. <laughs> why is that a thing? And, and you go to the animators and go, look, guys, you, you, you said like you, you're behind schedule. <laughs> what is this? Oh, we saw this thing in the comic and it was the coolest thing ever and so we did fun. this. Yeah. And 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 I think every single character I see, I see a different thing like that and it's hard. I like I like Clock King, I like Calendar Man, I guess. of course I like Silver Banshee and Cheetah. There's just too many good characters. Now, the, one of the other things that I love, I mean I'm, I'm sure this is sort of the obvious selling point here, but you know, the, the thing that is so much fun about games to begin with is, is the ability to choose whatever you want to do, to be able to create your own villain in this game yeah. blows me away. Yeah. I love that. And I love that you get to, to keep this villain as yourself throughout the entire adventure. Yeah. You get to choose, yeah. There's there's 30 different voices um, and, and, and it's vocalization. So yeah, it's it's really, really cool. Are we rotating? Is it musical chairs? I can tell. It's like volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>